Welcome to part three of my quad build. I uh, just want to share with you uh, a few thoughts uh, concerning this uh, build. And uh, for me, it's the first time that I'm building this quad, uh, this 250 size quad or any quad for that matter. And uh, I've been at it for a couple of months now on and off, uh, not full time, obviously. And uh, my first thoughts is that it's very possible. And uh, the proof is it's right here and it's built and I did test it it flew very nicely uh, the only comment I have is that I think it's a little too heavy for what this is supposed to be and um, right now we're gonna just pull out the scale and we're just gonna weigh it and the components that you see here basically are gonna be uh, I'm gonna be flying with with for the FPV is the the onboard camera this one here, and this is going to be recording HD. So it's the Mobius that I just basically vel velcroed it on top of this uh, vibrating mounted plate that came with the frame, with the quad frame. And I have, I'm flying with a 1500 LiPo uh, battery and it's a 35C, meaning it's a 35 uh, burst discharge energy. Uh, I have an 1800 as well, and uh, that one is uh, just over 140 grams. This one here is just over 100 grams. So you, you might want to experiment with different kind of batteries and weights and C ratings and see how your quad flies. But in all, let me just put this thing here on the scale to give you an idea of what the final weight is. So right now it's weighing at five, uh, sorry, 653 grams, just a bit over 653 grams, which makes it a pretty heavy quad for this size. I mean, it, it flies, still flies very well, and I'm not like an expert uh, at this, and I'm still, you know, learning to fly. I've been flying uh, helicopters and planes for uh, about two years now, and I just decided to get into quads. And let me tell you, it's very possible. So what I would like to do now is I'd like to uh, demonstrate to you the flight, let's say, characteristics of this thing. And before I do that, I just just a little note concerning balancing and uh, how this thing flew the first time I tested it, because uh, I, I did test it just to make sure everything was going well. And what I discovered it what I discovered is that the quad. Uh, upon flight was kind of wobbly and that had to do with uh, adjusting the PIDs on your flight controller this is a CC3D flight controller very inexpensive uh, from Banggood and uh, basically um, what I had to do is I, I didn't know what was happening so one thing that that could lead to this wobbliness is obviously your blades being not balanced which I learned how to balance and I'll put some links so you guys can uh, see this. I might even do a video just to show you what I found as a, as a easy tricks uh, in my case to, to balance the blades. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just take it for a little test flight and we'll see how it behaves. Um, so there you go. Let me just set this up for you. So first of all, I'll plug in this. Maybe I'll explain to you quickly before I plug everything in. What I did here is I have a um, battery monitor and I've decided to go with this simple one. It's basically uh, green lights and red lights. So when I plug in my battery, that will indicate that it's either green full or if uh, a few dots are turning into the red, that means it, the battery is slowly, get, slowly getting discharged. So what I've done here, I plugged this in. I have this little connector for the balance port and I'm going to take my main power with these... Uh, Dean's connectors, all right, coming from the battery here. And I'll also, for the FPV, what I did is that I have cable sitting in here that I can basically plug in the FPV camera here that'll power this camera here. So let me go ahead and plug this in. I'll open my radio first then plug the power in here okay so now I have my red light of my receiver which is solid red I know that it's bound to my radio and I have the CC3D blue light flashing meaning that it's 
waiting to get armed and uh, in the software you can configure it so it basically arms if you uh, yaw right and that's what I've done so let me just put this camera here so we can take a look all right so I'm gonna arm it I'm gonna yaw right and the blue light has stopped flashing. That means it's armed. So there you go, just a little uh, sample of how it flies. It flies pretty well right now. And that's because I've balanced the blades and I've also uh, configured the flight controller uh, for the correct PIDs. And uh, apparently every quad has a different PID, which is basically uh, uh, variables that will change the way your quad flies and will self-adjust according to every quad. So there's no uh, miracle recipe for the PID values or variables. You just have to figure them out yourself. And it's pretty long because you have to plug in your CC3D, change your variable, then unplug it, go try to fly it and see if it wobbles and try to get it um, you know, uh, less wobbly as possible. One other bit of information, I'm flying with five by three props and those I, that, that I had to balance. And when I change props, I have three bladed props and I also have five by four props. And I found that when I change to five by four, either the two bladed or the three bladed props, the, it, you know, the quad is wobbly again. So I think what I'll have to do is, depending on the setting or the kind of blades I wanna fly with, I'll have to find a different PID setting to, to fly, be able to fly with different kind of blades because these blades are pretty pretty smooth compared to the 5x4s, either tri-blades or the double blades. And that will uh, basically give you a bit more punch when you fly with the 5x4s. So what I'll do now is uh, I'll, uh, I'll dismantle this, this quad and unplug it and I'll dismantle it and I'll go into the wiring inside and show you how the wiring is done. So in the meantime, I'll put up a little uh, picture of the wiring that I've done with the CC3D and the um, Walkera 6 channel receiver uh, in case you want to get that one as well. So you'll, I'll give you the, the wiring scheme for that. Okay, so what I've done is I've uh, unmounted this top plate using this uh, mini Allen key. I was lying around in the house and uh, this is what the wiring looks like so I have let me just show you here I have the the flight controller which is this box here uh, which uh, is basically glued on with a double-sided tape and mounted on a little foam to prevent uh, mini vibrations seems to be doing okay that way and the wiring that's plugged into this here, this is coming from the ESCs. So the way the um, CC3D works is that motor one is over here on the, it's starting at the top left hand side, this being the front of the quad where the camera is. So one, two, three, and four. So I have the ESC wiring one coming in from the this ESC here, plugging into the first port of the CC3D and you have to basically look at um, I don't know if you could see it here there's a negative on the first uh, pin here and then there's a positive and then there's a signal so the signal wire is the in this case the yellow wire uh, so you have to make sure that the signal wire is plugged into this area here I'm trying to get the light on it like this and then uh, so the second ESC is the one coming from the top right. So this is the wire coming in from the ESC at the bottom, which is right here. And uh, as I've mentioned in my other tutorials, I've just put electrical tape to, to keep it 
black, dark like the frame. So and I have my third ESC that is coming in from this side here. So this is plugged in here with the signal uh, wire being the yellow wire uh, on the inside part of this flight controller. And then I have this coming in from the other ESC, which I won't unplug because right now I have my um, transmitter hiding where the wires are coming from. So I know that this is coming in from this one. So I could just basically put them back like this very easily. And what I've done here to give power to this whole quad, what I've done is I've uh, created um, cables with bullet connectors, male and female. In this case, I have a Dean's connector that I've made. Uh, the, the soldering is not that great, but uh, I managed to hide it with some shrink wrap. So that, that's a good thing. And what's neat about this is um, I can use different kind of batteries if I have different kind of, uh, you know, connectors on them. So for example, I can use this ES, uh, EC3 connector on this battery. And what I've done is I've just made a cable that has an EC3 head on it. And I've, you know, put the uh, female uh, connectors, bullet connectors on this end. So what I can do, just do is I just plug this right in and I'm good to go with another battery. So, and you can make as many cables as you want with different, you know, connectors, depending on different batteries you have. So that's one thing that I found that can be advantageous of making your cables yourself versus a power distribution board, which is basically uh, soldering your cables directly to the, the board of the quad. This one didn't have a power distribution board, so that's why I had to make these cables. Um, so this here is the... Um, the battery uh, voltage monitor, which I can just basically unplug. Let me just liberate my hand here. I can just basically unplug and it looks something like this, also available on Banggood. So that's the cable here that carries the, the lighting for the LEDs. Okay, and this cable goes into here and I've split and I've come out with a JST so I can power my camera as well. So this cable is split into five. Okay, so I'm powering with one battery, I'm powering the LEDs, I'm powering the camera, and I'm powering obviously the ESCs and the motors. So what I want to do for you now is I want to show you what these cables look like and how they're connected to the ESC. So let me just get some stuff out of the way. So I'll unplug, I'll start with the black cable, I'll unplug it. And this black cable here is tied into one ESC in the front. That'll unplug as well. And I have the other wires on this side here for the other ESCs, if I can manage to get them here without taking too much time. Let me see here. Okay, so this is the ESC here, wire. So let me unplug this wire. So these wires are coming from the ESCs in the front here. They're just coming in from inside. And this is the wire that I've uh, soldered together. And, and I think if you learn how to solder, I didn't know how to solder anything before I started this project. And I tried a couple of times, you know, I failed, but uh, I just kept on trying. And, uh, you know, it, the connections are working. So. So basically the wire looks like this. It looks like a little guy here. Um, so I have um, female connectors, bullet connectors, 3.5 millimeter bullet connectors here. And I have the, the male connector here. So this plugs into each ESC and this plugs into my other lead that I've created to be able to give the power from the battery, right? So. And I have the red one is, is basically the same. So I'm powering the black and the red because the ESCs have, you know, the black and red coming out of them for power and uh, negative. So the wiring, you know, it could be neater. But like I said, it's my first go at it. And I think uh, I would definitely try to improve things. One thing is I've used 14 gauge wires. I think I could use probably a... a a thinner wire, something like a 16 gauge or something would have done the trick because I think I think these wires are 16 gauge looks like. But anyhow, uh, 
right, so that's what it is. And uh, just coming back to this here, uh, coming out from your flight controller, you have these colored cables. And again, you'll have to go and uh, consult um, the uh, standard chart from the, the CC3D flight controller um, software, which uh, I've posted up as well. And underneath it, I've put in the uh, my color charts uh, corresponding to either the elevator, aileron, throttle, uh, rudder, gear, and auxiliary channel. So the way I've done it here is I've got your power goes into your throttle. Okay, so your power is actually the one that has the three cables sticking out of it. Let me just unplug it here. And it's this one here, the one that has your black, red, and white. So that's your power and it goes into the throttle channel. And then you have, uh, depending on, I think, uh, different colors, different uh, cables will, will have different colors. I don't think they're all the same, but just follow the direction. So basically the run after, right after the white one, which is a green, uh, in my case, is going into aileron. After that, the yellow is going into elevator. And I have a brown going into the rudder then followed by the orange the orange is going into my gear and uh, then i have the purple going into the auxiliary channel so that's the way it's wired up for me using the walkera receiver and all the parts that i have here are listed in my first uh, 250 quad build um, tutorial part one if in case you want to replicate this and what i've also done i uh, what I did is that I've also angled the camera instead of being um, facing, let's say, um, straight out. I've tried to angle it so that it's facing up. I don't know if you could see it because when you're flying, you're, you're basically angled this way. So instead of looking at more of the ground, you'll be able to look at more in front of you. And I'll have to do the same thing when I'm mounting the Mobius on top of the top plate. I want to also give it a little angle. So that I'm looking at the, hor the horizon more than the ground. What I wanted to mention to you is some little note concerning ESCs that I didn't really know about. And I think first time builders would appreciate is that ESCs basically come in uh, what is called um, a linear BEC. BEC meaning battery eliminator circuit. And if this is the case, which these are, so if you go on the parts list, these have a BEC built into them. And um, you can leave all the wires that are coming in from these leads intact and just plug them in into your flight controller. But if your BECs are what they call switched BEC, then that means you'd have to remove the power wire on every single uh, lead except for one because the power comes in from one and then somehow because it is it's a switched BEC uh, it only needs one power wire so and again um, a very helpful video from painless 360 uh, explains this very well and I'll try to put a link uh, in the description as well so anyway guys just to let you know uh, I've done it and it's possible so if I could do it you can do it as well and um, you could try to either get a power distribution board or just make your wires yourself. One last thing is the receiver here, which I've just basically strapped on. And, um, and this seems to work fine. So I'll have to give it a shot and uh, see if I could jump to the next step, flying FPV only. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Enjoy your build.